calling China an assassin, labeling Brazil's President Lula an angry communist. Argentina's new far-right president didn't mince his words on the campaign trail. He signaled a completely new direction for Argentina's foreign policy, including a pivot away from important trading partners, China and Brazil. Alineamiento de geopolítica es Estados Unidos e Israel. Nosotros no nos vamos a alinear con comunistas. Now Javier Milei is in office. Is he following through with this vision? In a sense, Milei's foreign policy ideas are aligned with his economic program for Argentina, right? Uh, he has radical pro-market views of the economy. And that, for him, means alignment on diplomatic uh, matters with the United States, with Israel, with what we would consider the West. That, for him, means a foreign policy that is not seeing towards China or towards Latin America as it was under the previous Peronist administration. President Millet has carried on with his hostile rhetoric towards Brazil's leftist government, inviting former far-right leader Jair Bolsonaro to his inauguration before he invited current President Lula da Silva. Only Bolsonaro ended up attending. Millet is an ideological ally of Brazilian, former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro of the ultra-right, right? And, and so that means immediately that Millet is sort of an ideological enemy of incumbent President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva. Another controversial decision came shortly after Millet took office. He turned down an invitation to join BRICS a block of emerging economies that is widely seen as a counter to Western domination. The move sends a particularly strong message to Brazil, one of the founding members of the bloc. By inviting Argentina, Brazil was trying to balance BRICS membership with more Latin American countries. Without Argentina, BRICS is pretty unbalanced towards other regional interests the message that Millet is sending is Brazil is not our priority up to now. But Brazil is Argentina's biggest trading partner, one Millet can't afford to risk losing if he wants to save his country's crumbling economy. His government insists it will continue to trade with Brazil as much as possible. Experts say Millet's approach to international trade is flawed. He is in kind of denial of how diplomatic relationships work. He thinks that if there is business to be done, ideology and political uh, intervention should not matter. And actually, he is ignoring that trade and investment are deeply political uh, embedded. Millet has the same approach to the relationship with China, Argentina's second largest trading partner. Despite his previous aggressive comments on the communist leadership, Millet's government says it does want to encourage trade between the two countries in the private sector. But analysts say that requires a more conciliatory approach. In several aspects, reality is already forcing Millet to move to more traditional, pragmatic approaches. For example, Millet has softened his rhetoric on China since the election. If his priority is his economic agenda, then uh, a shift in foreign policy based exclusively on ideology is the wrong way to go. China finances around a dozen infrastructure projects in Argentina, is the top buyer of Argentina's soybeans and a key investor in its lithium sector. If the current uncertainty and ambiguity regarding China continues, then it might begin to have economic implications for Argentina.